For programme three of Morgan 100, we go to Italy's Villa d'Este to see the new Aero Supersport. We'll be seeing the unveiling of that car and the visit by Princess Anne to Pickersley Road the next day. We're also going to Repton, where Martin Webb will be taking us to Askew House, and we're seeing off 138 Morgan cars on the centenary run from Repton to Malvern College. And we've got the full highlights of both the Auto GT Supersports victories at Silverstone in the FIA GT3 Championship. Eight minutes of our programme is dedicated to the new Aero Supersports. It was a genuine pleasure to attend the Concours d'Eleganza at Villa d'Este near Lake Como, where I caught up with its designer, Matthew Humphreys. The starting point for the Supersports is obviously the Aeromax, but when did you first have the idea of taking the roof off and doing something else with it? Um, it was actually 12 months ago when we came to Villa d'Este for the first time. We were so sort of taken back by all the elegance, the charm and all the character of the cars that are here. And also the, the idea of this automotive theatre, the, the concept of really quite exciting wild vehicles. You'd be mad not to look out in, in, you know, at the cars at the show and say, that's a fantastic idea, this is a brilliant idea, why on earth don't we do this? We, we you know, would be silly if we didn't look at the past and take from it and learn from the from mistakes. The Bugatti Atalante. Bugatti, as we said, is celebrating 100 years this year. This car is one of the definitive Bugatti road cars. Everybody enjoys a visit to Bickersley Road and the Princess Royal was no exception. She was greeted by a parade of three-wheeled Morgans before taking a look at the new car. Harry Morgan would have done this journey on a number of occasions, together with William Stevenson Peach. Although most probably he would have used the train, seeing as the original Morgan factory was right next to Morgan Link Railway Station. Askew House was Stevenson Peach's home when he worked at Repton School, and it was here that he established his engineering workshops. It was here in the grounds of Askew House, on the outskirts of Repton, that the original Morgan prototype was developed throughout 1910. Having learnt about the connection between Morgan and Repton, our programme guides us on the centenary run to Malvern College, featuring a very impressive array of four and three wheel cars. In Malvern, we see the unveiling of a plaque by the High Sheriff of Derby, and we get a first glimpse of Chris Booth's number one replica. But of course, the big story for Programme 3 is the fantastic performance of the Aero Supersports GT3 cars. We've got the highlights of both races in this 10 minute feature. It's a sunny holiday weekend at Silverstone and here's your first big surprise of the weekend, Morgan on pole for the first time ever. So let's not wait any longer. The Wiesman GT leading car into the pit lane. Pole man, Dimitri Engelbert on the left-hand side of the picture with Thomas Ackery alongside. They're looking ahead above the track to the gantry for the green light that says 2009 is go. And we're off. 20,000 horsepower banging down the main straight at Silverstone into turn one. It comes. Ackery's got the jump on Angelbert. The Audis have swapped places, I believe, and everybody else pretty much in grid order as they run down towards Maggots and Beckett's, and it isn't over yet. Angelbert comes straight back at Thomas Eckery, and through he goes, back into the lead. So the Audis are definitely in the wrong way round there, and Christopher Mees has got past uh, Nicholas Armindo to take third place, but it's Morgan from pole position leading the Hexis Aston Martin of Thomas Ackery, who we know from last year, very, very quick. One of several drivers in with a shout of the title by the time we got to the end of the season. And still in pretty much grid order, number seven there. 